Good day. I wanted to take a little while to, to introduce you to the world of Terramud, a massively multiplayer online roleplay game that used to exist on the school network, but now is hosted remotely out on a server in the real world and is open to the public. It has a, a newbie guide. Um, Wonka.info slash mud will be the home of help for noobs. There are a whole bunch of links here. We will explore some of them in a little while, but we need to connect to the game. The game is unlike any other game pro probably that you have played in that it is non-graphical and relies on an internet service called Telnet. Telnet is a text-based remote login to another server and in fact that's how you play this game by remote logging into another server. Um, you need a client to do that. Uh, Windows helpfully has disabled the built-in client but you can re-enable it by searching for Telnet and going to the turn window features on and off there's a list of things that windows has decided you don't need if you scroll down you will find telnet make sure that's ticked and when you say okay it will actually run a little wizard that makes sure that that service is now awake for you windows telnet is the most primitive way into the game but it allows you to play the game um, and all of the features of the game so we'll start there I'm going to create a new character, but let's first of all go there. You can click there, you can click on any of these images as well to go there. It will run a Telnet session, which is a remote login. Now it'll pop up a message saying, I don't quite know what to do. Open the internet shell extension and it'll pop open a Telnet client. Now, first of all, you can see that it's entirely textual. Um, by design, there is nothing to click on here. There are no graphics, no buttons, no nothing. It wants me to make up a character name. I'm going to make up a unique character name. I'm going to call myself Peter. That shouldn't exist. Good. New character. Are you sure? Yes, I am. All right. Tell me about yourself. Now, we've got to define a character here. And our choices sort of matter. For your first character, I'm not sure the choices matter much at all because you'll probably throw away your first character. Um, but your first character is a useful orientation tool because it gives you a, an insight into the world and also how you work in the world. So I'm going to choose male just because Peter at the moment feels like one. I've got to choose a class and straight away you look at those classes and probably you recognize them if you've played any form of game in the past. These are Dungeons and Dragons classes and in fact MUD stands for multi-user Dungeons and Dragons. Terra Mud is one of those styles of game However, you won't find Dungeons and Dragons in Terra Mud. The game space is 100% unique based on something you may be familiar with. We'll come back to that in just a little while. That said, the underlying engine is a D&D &D engine and you need to make some choices here because your choices will impact how you play your character, what stats the character needs, what skills they have and what they're good at and what they're not good at. Um, I'm gonna choose a Meat Mountain. Let's go for a Barbarian. And I now need to put in some character stats. There are five life stats in this game, and they matter. The mix determines your success or failure at various base skills, as well as general clumsiness and things like that in the game. So, you you have a total, um, uh, you have a total here, um, uh, 54 points. Sorry, my brain went. My brain stopped for a moment. You've got 54 points total, and you've got to distribute them amongst the five stats. Now, I've given you some suggested mixes. These are not perfect by any means, but they're perfectly good as starting stats. I'm going to go 18, 18, 7, 8, 3, and that indicates the three stats that I'm interested in using. Um, they are in order strength, dexterity, constitution, intelligence, and piety. Now, each of these stats controls game aspects and the amount of that stat will change as you gain experience and level so the starting ver ver values of these stats sort of matter um, because they'll greatly determine how successful you are in your chosen class um, the barbarian stats maxes out strength and dexterity primarily because they need to be meat mountains and they need to be good at picking up weapons using weapons dodging attack and so on um, my Meat Mountain, in terms of intelligence uh, and constitution, I've got a fairly poor constitution, which means I'll heal fairly slowly. My intelligence is 8, which means 
that I'm a little bit intelligent. Intelligence is needed for things like casting magic and solving problems. So I need a little mm -hmm. bit of that. And piety, I don't know whether my meat mountain needs to believe very much. So I've got given him only three. Pressing enter. I now have to pick a weapon proficiency. Now this is a starting proficiency. Um, you can be proficient in any of these weapons. As in, if you find one in game, pick it up and start using it, you will gain proficiency in that uh, type of weapon. I've just got to choose one to start with. Um, I quite like the idea that my meat mountain is going to be using a club, so I'm going to choose blunt in this case. Magic Realm. So those of you who are wanting to explore magic, there's a full range of spells in the game. They are grouped in terms of these realms. Uh, your first character choice probably doesn't matter what realm you choose. Um, and certainly some classes are terrible at magic anyway. So if you're choosing the, a magic path, then you'll be more directed in this decision. I don't really care. I'm going to choose Earth because that's the first letter. Next, I have to choose Alignment. And Alignment here determines whether or not I can be player killed or not. Now that matters. Um, player killing is a sport. Some people really enjoy it. Some people get very annoyed by it when they're trying to play a game and they just get uh, brutalized. So if you don't want to be killed in game, you need to choose lawful at this stage. Uh, um, <coughs> excuse me. There is a realignment process. Um, it's messy. So making a choice about do I want to be involved in player killing or not um, at this stage is probably the best choice. I'm going to choose lawful so I don't get player killed. Next I have to choose a race. Now the race matters for, on a bunch of things. The way the stats dance is determined by race. There are special abilities. Some races have special abilities. Some get proficiency bonuses. We'll talk more about that when we look at the stat engine. Um, I think I might choose a dark elf, night vision, um, they get more constitution, they get a little bit more intelligence, they lose a little bit of piety. That's okay. I'm going to go with the Dark Elf just because I can. I'm going to need a password. I've just typed a password and um, I'm now in game. It's not as pretty as it could be. Uh, there is a little bit of color here, but um, we've got to wake that up. Set and see. Turns on the colour mode. Now when I look at the room I'm in, there's a little bit of colour, headings and things. Um, now I talked about the notion of a room. A multi-user Dungeons and Dragons is all about uh, dungeon, dungeons. In the, in, the, in the old world, dungeons were rooms and dragons were monsters that lived in those rooms. And then you'd move from room to room. Well, in this game, we have rooms as well, but some of those rooms are actual rooms. Some of those rooms are places outside. So we're in a reception uh, of a school, as it turns out, or what used to be a school, now is the remains of a place that's lovingly called St. Joe's. Um, and the game space itself is modelled very closely on the actual St. Joe's um, in terms of physical geography. Uh, most of the places that exist in the current St. Joe's can be found in game, albeit set on fire, blown up and full of um, things that are going to try and damage you. But that's life in a inner city school, I guess. Um, if we look at the what the room is telling us, there are a couple of things about uh, uh, basic mud play that are necessary, and that's getting around, and also looking at things that are in the place you're at. At the moment it says you can see a new poster and a tome. I can look at the poster. And it tells me, welcome to Terramard, go to the TLC if you're on, a, on the beginning of your learning journey. I'm not going to, I'm going to ignore that. I think I can just work out how to play this game. Um, there are exits here, out, south and TLC. If I wanted to go out, I would type out. If I wanted to go south, I'd type the letter S. If I wanted to go TLC, I'd have, actually have to type go space TLC. Any door that is an odd named door you need to use the word go and enough of the name of the door to actually go through the door. There are only three doors visible here as obvious exits. That doesn't mean that that's the only number of doors that are here. In fact, uh, if I was better equipped, I could search and possibly find hidden doors and locked doors that are hidden 
at which I'd need to get a key to go through. So it's not quite as simple as it first seems, but from a noob's perspective, it's perfectly fine. Um, I want to check out my battle status, so I might look at PDUB to look at myself, and it's, I see myself as a Dark Elf tribesman. I'm fighting fit and ready for action. You'll notice there's a stats bar here. It says my health points are 24 out of 24, and my magic points. Oh, I've got a magic point. I've got one of one. So as a level one, I get one magic point and 24 health points. If I let my health points drop below, well, drop to zero, um, I essentially expire as a character and I am sent to sick bay to recover. I lose a little bit of um, game stat as well by being defeated, so I wouldn't recommend being defeated. You've got to try and do your best not to be defeated in battle. That said, if you do, you can always recover by going into battle and being more successful. So it's all interesting. This is a massively multiplayer roleplay game. I say massively multiplayer. <coughs> the, the reality is there aren't a lot of players that play it. If we type who, we can see, however, that there are a bunch of characters currently on, uh, including a dungeon master, a game manager, that is, and a bunch of players, um, a couple that have joined um, the equivalent of a guild in here, which they're called gangs, and you can actually join a gang when you get to a certain level in here. We've got a number of different mobs that you can join. Um, I'm not going to probably interact with those people because I don't actually know who they are. There is no good way of working out who is who in this game because it's 100% anonymous and because it's open to the public, it could be anyone from anywhere. So you, you as a player need to look after your personal information very carefully. That's really important. Um, what else? What else? If I type EQ for equipment, um, that's not good news. I'm currently naked. Um, I'm hoping that the game gave me some basic stuff. I typed INV to see my inventory. Yep, okay, I'm carrying some bits of a uh, uniform. I want to wear that. Wear all. Um, wear all. Type it correctly. Typing matters here. You type for your life. I've just put on parts of a uniform. Um, so if I type EQ now, I'm currently having bits of my body protected by armor. This is cloth armor. Um, although the shoes, I think, are leather armor, which is a one step up. The Akubra and the flannel trousers and the gray shirt are protecting bits of me. As I find various things around this world, I can try to put them on. Um, there are seven, maybe eight, I can't remember. I think it's eight levels of armor that get more and more protective. Cloth armor is pretty well down the bottom. But that's what you're given as a noob. I'm also interested in what equipment I'm currently, what is still in my inventory. I've got a crowbar. Now I chose a blunt weapon and I have been equipped with a crowbar. I need to wield that as a weapon. W-I-E, crow. I can abbreviate most of the commands here. I'm wielding the crowbar. It now says I'm armed with a crowbar. That's helpful. If I look, L for look, I now have some directions here and before I come out of reception I want to talk to you about directions because they sort of matter and I'll switch to a different view and I'll switch to my drawing view I'll come back to that in just a sec control two I think you can now see me drawing now the idea behind directions in Terramud matters we're in the main campus so uh, this is the Gregory Terrace campus and we have what are called cardinal directions north and south. Now to orient yourself, south is Water Street. So if you go as far south as possible, you'll be stopped by property boundaries and other dangerous things, but that's basically Water Street. If you go north as far as you can, you'll hit Gregory Terrace. And we can choose to go north and south if we find doors that, are, that say north and south just by using the letters N and S. Similarly, we can go west and west will take us to, I never remember the name of that road, it's either Victoria Street or um, the other one on the other side. I can never remember, I can never remember which one is which, but it's, um, we, we are bounded in a city block on the main 
on the main campus of Terrace. Um, and going west takes you to that street um, eventually. Going east continually will take you to the front gate of the school and possibly a bus that would take you to Tennyson. I should point out that the game space here is the entire collection of campuses that is your school, or uh, the school I currently work at. Um, I was trying to find a unique place for players to play, and as I've worked there for 33 years, I found it remarkably easy to imagine the campus blown up, set on fire, and infested with all manner of vermin. And that's in fact exactly the game space that I have designed for you. It is a dangerous place. It is no longer a school. Um, it's colloquially called St. Joe's, and there are a bunch of rela related campuses. So you can go via a very dangerous tunnel out to Victoria Park. You can get on a bus and go to Tennyson. You can find a way to Maroon. Um, all of those campuses exist, um, and they have different collections of critters designed for different levels. So I'm a currently a level one. The main campus is a place really where I need to be. Um, finishing up on cardinal directions, obviously northeast, uh, southeast, southwest, and northwest, if we're looking at compass direction exits. But there are also things like up for stairwells, down for stairwells as well, and other places. You can get those exits just by abbreviating them to up, the letter U, and down D. Um, out is also something that you can use just by typing the word out. Any other type of exit, and we've got one here to TLC for example, if I wanted to go to the Terrace Learning Centre, I would need to type go space followed by TLC, the name of the door. Any irregularly named door, I would need to use the word go followed by enough of the name of that door for me to unambiguously go through the door. I'm going to go out because out seems like a plan. I'm outside reception and for those of you who are trying to imagine where we are, it's underneath the um, a, the place called Dewing Place now, uh, this is old school, so old school in a number of ways in that this is old school gaming, but it's also the old school campus. I haven't updated it with the latest building, the, the latest building, so you have to navigate your way through the old floor plan. Um, but I'm at the student services door, essentially, um, outside, uh, outside Mount Sion and we've got to go through the quadrangle to get somewhere else. Cardinal directions here, north, east, west, and I could go back into reception if I wanted to. I'm going to go north, which means I'm heading further towards Gregory Terrace, and for those of you who remember the campus, to get up to Gregory Terrace, I'm on ground level Dewey Place, I'm going to have to go up two sets of stairs before I get up to Gregory Terrace. All of that geography is rendered faithfully. I'm southern end of the quadrangle, going north. Now there's a warning here beside the void. Um, in a particularly violent um, imagining, I imagined that uh, some form of explosion went off in the middle of Dewey Place and underneath Dewey Place there's a pool. Uh, there's a hole in the middle of Dewey Place. It's called the void. You've got to avoid it because if you go down the, the void you will damage yourself if you are small enough like me. I'm only a level one with very little health. Um, that fall will kill me. So you do need to be careful. It does say watch your steps, structural damage to the west. There is a door to the west. If I choose to go west, I will plummet down the hole and do some damage. So I'm going to avoid that if I can. Um, in the middle of the quadrangle, um, continuing north, and I've suddenly come across an NPC. Well, actually there's two. Um, handballers. So I'm going to look at the handballer. Um, sporty type concentrating on bouncing the handball. He looks like something you could battle fairly with. Interesting. So I could actually battle this uh, monster. I think I'm going to try. I am currently, I typed EQ. I'm currently wielding a crowbar. So I want to attack the handballer. So A hand is enough. And now the only problem here is if I take one swipe at the handballer, then that's all the game will render and then the handball will, will get angry and start swiping back. So I'm going to need to continually attack the handballer. I've taken one, I've I hit for three damage, a hand. Excellent. 
So I managed to defeat the handballer. I got nine experiences, experience points. Um, I took a little bit of damage. I'm now 19 out of 24. Um, the handballer was carrying some stuff. I will type get all. I picked up a dollar and a tennis ball. That goes into my inventory. The dollar goes into my wallet. The tennis ball goes into my inventory. I have a limited capacity for carrying stuff. Everything in Terra Mud is put there for a reason. And there are currently seven uses for a handball. Um, and your job is to find them, obviously. There are no accidental objects here. Everything has been placed deliberately. Everything does a job. And part of the gameplay is working out what do I do with the handball. Um, worst case scenario, all objects can be sold or junked for money. So one of the things you could do if you really wanted money was go and collect stuff and take it to a recycle center. There are a whole bunch of recycle centers in this game. When you drop things at a recycle center, you get the recycle fee, which is nice and green. Uh, it's a nice environmentally friendly way of getting rid of rubbish rather than leaving it lying around. If you leave rubbish lying around, people will pick it up and will go and junk it and get the money instead of you. So there is an advantage to picking things up that you find. Um, I might look at the other handballer. Yep, I'm going to attack the handballer again. A hand and a hand. Excellent. I've got another nine experience. Another two bucks. I'll get all. So if I look at my inventory now, INV, I'm carrying two tennis balls. The money info. The money has now gone into my wallet. I now have eight bucks in my wallet. Um, I haven't banked any. There is a banking system here. So if you've got lots and lots and lots of money, you should put it in the bank. The reason you should put it in the bank is if somebody PKs you, you drop money and they can pick up your money. So it doesn't, it, it's not generally advised for players who are chaotic to carry large amounts of money. You do need money. There are shops. Um, there are ways of trading money for certain things. There are vending machines. You do need money, but you don't need lots and lots of it. And my advice is put it in the bank. Um, you'll possibly notice that my blunt proficiency is now at 20% because I have used my crowbar on two victims. My blunt is going up and that's good. The aim is to get proficient with a type of weapon. I need to find something better than a crowbar because I have a feeling that the crowbar will eventually just fall apart, as will my armor if I take strikes. And that's not good because currently I'm only wearing cloth armor and I need to be careful about that. I look to see what else is around. Clump has arrived. I'll wave. Um, he left. Uh, I don't know who Clump is, so I will not give any of my personal details to Clump until I'm absolutely certain I know who they are. And even then I would be fairly uh, circumspect in what I share because... Uh, all you have is the text-based feed and what they say. And we all know that people can pretend to be anything. I'm currently pretending to be a barbarian. Um, and yeah, there's no real clue as to who is what. So be very careful in this world is my advice because you never quite know who you are encountering. Um, in terms of basic gameplay, I have to get experience. You'll notice that I'm now 18. I've got 494 until I'm able to level. TNL means to next level. Um, I accrue XP by attacking things um, and successfully attack things. I can join groups and share in XP bounties. Um, hunting parties are quite common in here and oftentimes you'll find a whole mob of people r running around as a group attacking something much higher in level. Um, when you're on your own and you've got fairly poor gear, you need to be consistent. Uh, sorry, you need to be um, a little bit conservative or you will take damage. And I'm going to try and do that now. So if I go look, find there are two more handballers. I'm going to attack a handballer, a hand. To repeat the command, you can exclamation mark. It repeats the last command. All right, I'm going to keep attacking a handballer. I haven't taken very much damage at the moment. I am giving a bit of damage. There is a cooldown as well, so you can't continually spam commands. There's a little bit of, please wait a few more seconds, 
and some things have really long cooldowns. So magic, for example, um, has quite a long cooldown and you have to wait until you've got enough magic points. I've got one magic point. I, that's not enough to do anything. Looks as though somebody has just leveled. That's awesome. I'm broadcasting. Well done and interesting. I'm not uh, so somebody else broadcasted, but it says I'm still a noob. I'm not allowed to broadcast yet. So when I get to level two, when I find my training location and get to level two, then I will be able to broadcast to level one can't. And that's just controlling um, noob behavior. We try to be as civil as possible in here. Um, oh, I better go and get that. Nice. So I keep going north just because north seems like a good place. End of brick building. Now the end of the brick building would be the tuck shop, I think. Um, and it says to the northwest there are some wheelie bins. Ah, oh, cool. Okay, so if I go northwest, it says that recycling is a good plan here. I'm in the wheelie bin storage. What have I got in my inventory? I have four tennis balls. If I drop a tennis ball, I just recycled it. Nice. I got some money for it. Um, I'm going to repeat that. I'm going to get rid of some of the tennis balls. I only ever really need one. How many have I got? I've got a tennis ball. Okay, I'm fairly happy with that. So I'm in the wheelie bin storage at the end of the tuck shop building, which is very useful. I got here by... How did I get here? I think I um, went northwest, so I can go south east to, to backtrack. And I'm back where I was. Uh, I might go west, because west will take me in under the undercoft. Yep, in the what is now the year nine area. I'm now under a large building complex, sort of above the Campbell Center. Um, I will go north, outside the, the old studies office, north, outside the staff room, outside sick bay. Oh, cool. I will go, sorry, my, my typing just went nuts. Go sick. I'm now in sick bay. Um, if I had taken damage, I would heal quicker here. I will bow. Um, a video being polite I just said I hope everybody is is fine I will target a wave to Raven and I've just said noobs rule okay so I'm in the sick bay this is where I'll be teleported to uh, when I die, um, which is good. Um, I will go back out. Um, I heal quicker there too. So if I've taken damage out in the main campus and um, I'm concerned about healing quicker, then I need to come back to sick bay and sick bay it doesn't move. Interestingly, the geography at Terra Mud is fixed. So the only thing that changes is your position in it. Um, you control that position. And most players, most players, let me just check that I'm, I want to check that I'm not covering up. I am, aren't I? Okay, I apologize. I will switch that back to non-draw mode. Um, most players map, so players actually draw maps of where they are because the maps themselves are fairly consistent. Um, I am out, I will go north. I need to switch back to that window. I will go north. Um, at the base of the stairs, I'll go up the stairs, I will go west, and I am now on level four of the building. Um, there's a dean's office here, and I can go south down the corridor, and there's a classroom there, a disorganized student. Let's look at the disorganized. He looks like he'll be a real challenge. Ha! You say that. Okay, so I'm going to attack disorganized, a dis. Um, okay, he took a swipe. Oh, crap. Okay, a dis. A dis. And 
is a hit for sin and let's look at him uh, he's very angry and he's suffering life life uh, oh crap okay yep so I was a little too slow in my battle and got defeated by something but I did take on something that was more dangerous than me so always look at the thing you're attacking I am now in the regeneration chamber um, and I can go regenerate and I'm now in sick bay again and uh, I will make sure that my health is full before I go back out if I inventory I'm carrying a tennis ball when I type EQ I am still armored I took a whole lot of damage there so my armor will have taken some of it some of the damage and I can probably check the um, the if I take off my shirt remove and look shirt um, it is in excellent condition it was in pristine condition so it has taken some damage eventually my armor will take so much damage that it falls off and is useless I can I think then recycle damaged armor or I can repair it there's a repair shop if you know where the maintenance department is you can take stuff there and get it repaired um, that's useful for really good rare rep weapons and armor not so much for cl cloth armor um, but yes I could get stuff repaired so I'm going to stay in sickbay for the moment. This has been a very, very short guided tour of gameplay. I will save my character here and quit the game because I want to talk about some resources that are available to you, the prospective player. And they're all in the newbies guide. Um, in terms of uh, stats, it's probably important to discuss a stat engine. The stat engine will allow you to more in a more informed way choose the stats for your character the reason that you need to care about stat uh, initial stat mixes for the type of player and the race is that there are stat bonuses at particular levels and you want to engineer it so that your stat progression as you level up matches the things you need to be able to do so um, naturally health point go, health points go up as you level up which means that you've got more resilience in battle the amount of magic points goes up um, which is important for uh, classes that cast magic um, not every class is good at magic um, necessarily but you can practice it and if you if you want to do magic you need the magic points for that those magic points take a while to recharge so you do need to use them carefully the armor class the the strength, dexterity, constitution, int intelligent, and piety. Um, that the armor class is an important measure, and it's all about uh, how effective your armor is and how readily you deflect damage. But this stats generator will allow you to choose a mix. Notice, please, 12, 10, 10, 12, 10 gives you a total of 54. Understand that you. As a noob, only get 54 to start with, so choosing your initial starting stats matters. If you max out, for example, on strength, we're now at 60, so we've got to trim something else back. Let's go back to 6. We're now back at 54, so that's a possible stat mix for a fighter race human. If I was to choose a bard, a half-giant bard, then the there's an intelligence... Um, penalty in the earlier year in the earlier levels you actually your intelligence is less effective with this class um, but your stat bonuses kick in at the really high levels as well which is sort of important um, this dance of what type of character you choose and the initial stat balance so this is quite a rich one for example strength bonuses dexterity bonuses kick in fairly quickly um, but you have start off slightly less intelligent as a ranger. One of the strengths of a ranger is that they're really good at finding things. Um, which brings up, I guess, the, uh, the last thing I wanted to, le to leave with, um, and that was in-game forming parties 
make sense, as in getting together with a bunch of people who have varying abilities, because the challenges in game require characters with all sorts of abilities. Sometimes you need somebody who's really good at picking a lock. Sometimes you need somebody who's really good at searching something. Sometimes you need a meat mountain um, that can pummel away at something while somebody else is casting. Uh, so the mix of characters in your party matters. Um, individual characters, though, have been hugely successful. We've had lots of historic uh, characters that have done really, really well in this game. And yeah, you've got to explore. There are some resources here in terms of um, how to go about battling, how to travel, how to communicate. There's a full in-game communication system. Um, there's a party communication. There's text messaging. There's personal messaging. There's broadcasting. So it's purely text, but there are lots of ways of talking with people and you need to explore that as well. There are protocols around that conversation. Don't be too surprised if you are rude that you're blanked by characters. So a little bit of common sense and a little bit of politeness goes a long way. There are also guides on places that you might want to visit, particularly given your level. So level one, um, level one characters uh, really should level up in the main campus. But once you've sort of leveled up a little bit, then there's lots of places that you can go. Um, the, the parts of the campus that have, model, have been modeled so far are really rich and interesting and require lots of skill to do well at. Um, from a newbie's perspective, there's some general information. There's guides about magic. Um, there's also a couple of uh, historic records of really big battles. This game has been around for a long time. Uh, it, first, it was first released in 2003, um, was decommissioned in 2008, 2009, and it joins us back 2022, which is very exciting. Um, enough ranting from me, I think. Uh, the aim here would be to explore, give it a go, um, be polite, be observant, read, type accurately, type for your life. That's Terra Mud.